You said that you had an early call the next day, and so you went upstairs to your room. Everyone went up at the same time. Uh, did anything happen after you went upstairs to your room? Um, yeah, when I was sleeping, I had a knock at my door, and I opened my door, and two men uh, were there and gave me a pouch and said, a gift for you. Do you know what time that was that that no, happened? No, I don't yeah. know. I just, I was sleeping, so I was woken up from my sleep. And these two men, did you know who they were? No, I'm afraid not. Did these two men introduce themselves to you? No, they did not. Did you ever learn who they were? No, I did not. And you said they knocked at your door and they told you what? A gift for you, and they gave me a pouch. And did they say anything other than that? No. Did you ever subsequently learn who this gift was from? No. I was there the next morning at breakfast. I told Miss um, Farrow and Miss White what had happened. And one of the two said, well, that's obviously Charles Taylor. And I just said, yeah, I guess it was. This pouch that they gave you, mm -hmm. uh, what happened after they gave you the pouch? When they gave me the pouch, I just put it next to my bed and went back to bed. And so at that time, you didn't look into the pouch? I opened the pouch the next morning when I woke up. And when they came to your door, did you ask them what this pouch was? What was in the pouch? No, I took it and I just said thank you and went back, took it and shut my door. And did they say anything about why they were bringing this pouch to you? There was no explanation, no note. So you put the pouch by your bed and then you went back to sleep? Correct. Uh, at some point, did you look into this pouch to see if there was anything in it? In the morning, I did, yes, when I opened up in the morning. And when you opened up this pouch, what did you discover? I saw a few stones in there. And, and there were very small, dirty-looking stones. And these small, dirty-looking stones, what did you do with them after you? I took, went downstairs to breakfast, and I took all my luggage, my, yeah, my luggage with me as we were to leave from breakfast to the cars, to the train. And I wanted to find my friend, who's someone that I trust and does great things in South Africa, in charity, to give them to him to do something with. I didn't want to keep them, and that's exactly what I did. Other than this meeting with Charles Taylor at the dinner, since that time, or even later that night, have you had any other contact no with contact Mr. Charles No contact at all. never seen him again since the dinner table. And, uh, Ms. Campbell, I, I notice again that you are uh, answering before I finish. Sorry. Uh, are you a bit nervous? No. Well, I didn't really want to be here, so I was made to be here. So, obviously, I'm just, like, wanting to get this over with and get on with my life. This is a big inconvenience for me. And you said you didn't want to be here. Why did you not want to be because here? Because I really don't want anything to do with this, and I care about the protection of my family. And as I said on television before, I didn't want to be, have anything to do with this. And why would you be concerned about the protection of your family? Because this is someone that I read up on the Internet that's killed thousands of people, supposedly, and I don't want my family in any danger in any way. Question number one. On that night, mm -hmm. Neither of the men told you that these diamonds came from Charles Taylor. Is that right? Correct. Furthermore, the next morning at breakfast, you did not tell either Mia Farrow or Carol White that the men said the diamonds came from Charles Taylor, did you? No, I did not. The suggestion about Charles Taylor came from one of them. Yes. And so consequently, it is pure speculation that these diamonds came from Charles Taylor. That's correct, isn't it? We, I just assumed mm, that they but, were. But it's pure speculation, isn't it? I don't, I, just, I don't know. I just assumed that they were. That's not where I sat. I sat next to Mr. Mandela. Mm. But hold on, Miss Campbell. It gets even better than that. Because later on in the statement, Miss White says this, 
the witness, that's Carol Wright, said that throughout the dinner, Miss Campbell and Mr. Taylor were mildly flirtatious with each other. The witness heard Mr. Taylor tell Miss Campbell that he was going to send her diamonds. Taylor and his people were staying some distance away, so it was arranged that he would send some men back with the gift. Is that true or false? That's not true at all. It's a lie, isn't it? My, I was sat next to Mr. Mandela, mm. and the conversations, if there was a conversation about diamonds, it wasn't to me. Um, we spoke about what I was doing for the Children's Fund. I remember Mr. Mandela explained to Mr. Taylor what I did for the Children's Fund. Mm. Because this morning you've already told us that you did not specifically speak to Charles Taylor that evening, did I you? I spoke in general. Um, I was interested about Liberia. I never heard of it before. Mm. And um, he said he was the president of Liberia. Mm. But you flirting with Charles Taylor, that's a complete lie, isn't it? When, as I said before, when I'm with Mr. Mandela, and I think everyone in the world feels mm. the same way, my attention and focus is with him. Mm. And it's an honor to be in his presence and to be with him in his house. Forgive me if I press you a little further on this, Miss Campbell, but I would like a straight answer. This is a lie, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Thank you.